Hey guys, welcome to my channel. It's a travel and food doctor here, and today we are at the Jantar Mantar in Jaipur. Point to note that this is different from Jantar Mantar in Delhi. It's very important while booking the online ticket because there will be a long queue for the physical tickets. And the first Google search leads you to Jantar Mantar in Delhi. So we lost some 40 rupees in that for two tickets of Jantar Mantar Delhi. This Jaipur one cost 50 rupees per 52 or 50 rupees per person. And that too, it gives a lot of trouble while booking. You keep on getting the OTPs and the page just does not go uh, move ahead. So we had a tough time booking but finally we are in. You can try clearing them your cash, cash in memory or something like that. Okay, so this is the Jantar Mantar finally. So some kind of contraptions here and there. Uh, if possible you can go with a guide I guess because nothing really seems to make any sense here. But you can always read what's written. So let's check out the various contraptions. Or we can kind of eavesdrop on some other guides. Calculation of time with small sundial. So, Joe Dash Shak Patika showing the north. It's like a compass, compass showing towards the pole star. Again, this is Nadi Valley. The Janta Mantar in Jaipur is a collection of 19 astronomical instruments built by the Rajput king Savai Jai Singh in the early 18th century. It is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It is the largest and the best preserved of the five Jantar Mantars built by Raja Jai Singh. The others are located in Delhi, Ujjain, Mathura and Varnasi. The instruments are made of stone and are very large. Some of them are as tall as 27 meters. The instruments were used to measure time, predict eclipses and track the moment of the stars and the planets. The Janta Mantar is still used today for research purposes. It is a popular tourist destination. It was built between 1728 and 1734. The instruments are named after their functions such as the Samrat Yantra that is the emperor's instrument which is the largest sundial in the world. The Jantar Mantar is a beautiful example of Rajput architecture and it's a great place to learn about Indian astronomy. Ashwik is here with us at Chetra Mantar. What do you want to say, Ashwik? I hope this information is helpful. Yes, it is. Thank you so much. So this is inside the astronomical observatory, a unique instrument called as the Rashi Vale Yantra. Uh, this instrument is designed to represent the 12 zodiac signs and all the 12 zodiac signs are represented in this instrument or yantra that is Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, 
Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius and Pisces. So how does it work is that each of the 12 Rashi Valley or the Zodiac instruments correspond to a specific Zodiac sign and when a particular Zodiac sign is approaching the meridian, the gnomon that is the shadow casting part, it points towards the pole of the ecliptic. The plane of the quadrants align with the plane of the ecliptic and each instrument displays a painting of the corresponding Zodiac signs on its gnoma. So you should really go for a guide for this gentleman for sure. It's quite interesting but you won't kind of decipher it by yourself. Don't touch. It's a compass. Chakra Yantra. The Chakra Yantra is essentially a pair of upright metal circles, each with a sighting tube attached. It is used to determine the right ascension and declination of the celestial bodies. These coordinates are like the longitude and latitude of the sky. By aligning the sighting tube with the celestial object and making specific measurements, astronomers could accurately pinpoint its position. The instrument was crucial for predicting the positions of planets and stars, calculating the time accurately and studying celestial moments. Essentially, the Chakra Yantra was a sophisticated tool for understanding the cosmos in its time. This is the Ram Yantra which consists of a pair of cylindrical structures each with a central pillar and it is used to determine the altitude and azimuth of celestial bodies. Altitude is the angle between the object and the horizon, azimuth is the angle between the north point and the projection of the object onto the horizon. The observer aligns the celestial body with the top of the central pillar and reads the altitude and azimuth from the scales inscribed on the walls and floor of the structure. This instrument was crucial for determining the positions of celestial bodies, calculating the time accurately and navigational purposes. The Ramayantra is a testament to the ingenuity of its creator and the advanced level of astronomy achieved in ancient India. So Ashwik, did you understand any of this? Yes! I doubt that do check out our other videos on Jaipur like Amer Fort, Hawamal, uh, Nargar Fort and Jaigar Fort. Like, like, share and subscribe. Yes, thank you Ashwik.